Hi there. Welcome to the Visual Modflow Flex video training series. My name is Braden McNeil and I'm the lead software trainer here at Waterloo Hydrogeologic. In this video I'll discuss grid operations such as grid and layer refinement and the selection of inactive model cells. After initially creating the grid, the next step in the numerical modeling workflow is the View Edit Grid step. At this stage you'll be able to apply grid and layer refinements to ensure you're getting precise results in the areas of interest. Clicking the Edit Grid or Edit Layer buttons will initiate the grid editing process and open the Edit Grid window. You can provide a new name for your grid in the New Grid Name field. By default, the existing grid name will simply be appended by underscore refined. Please note that a checkbox is available under the name field which allows you to overwrite the existing grid. By default, a new grid will be created and the original grid will be retained. However, please note that overwriting the existing grid cannot be undone, and you will not be able to go back to the original model if it is overwritten. A preview window is included to the right so that you can track any changes that you've made to the grid. In order to actually perform a grid refinement, first select whether you would like to edit rows or columns using the Edit Rows or Edit Columns button. Then you must select a range of rows or columns between which you would like a grid refinement to be applied. Finally, specify the refinement ratio using the Replace Every and the Rows With fields. Please note that the black boxes on the right here are dynamic and will display exactly the refinement ratio that you're going to be applying. Click the Apply Grid Edit button to actually perform a refinement. If you don't like the change, you can undo any edits by clicking the Undo Edit button. And finally, if several refinements have been performed and you want to restart, you can simply click the Reset button to return the grid to its original state. Grids with large changes in, uh, in cell sizes between adjacent cells may encounter stability or non-convergence issues. In other words, ModFlow may not be able to reach a solution. The Quality Indicators frame will help you to highlight adjacent cells which have large changes in cell size, which can contribute to these problems. By default, the max ratio threshold is 1.5, however, this can be adjusted to your model requirements. And if you do not wish to display the quality indicators, simply uncheck the Highlight Cells Exceeding Threshold button. When you're happy with your grid refinements, click OK and the new grid and associated files will be generated in the Model Explorer on the bottom left. Additionally, a new workflow window will open up. Editing layers is very similar to the process for editing your horizontal grid, although some additional options are available. It is possible to refine layers in the same way as the horizontal grid, but in addition to layer refinement, you can also insert layers, remove surfaces to merge layers, and you can also replace the surfaces which delineate the top or bottom of your model layers. Just like the grid refinements, you can specify a new name for the newly refined grid and it's also possible to overwrite the existing grid. When you're satisfied with the changes to your model layers, click OK, OK to apply the edits. Once again, the new grid and associated files will be generated in the Model Explorer and a new workflow window will open up. The View Edit Grid step also allows you to define model cells which will be inactive during the simulation. When the default model grid is initially created by Visual ModFlow, all grid cells are set as active for both flow and transport, such that the model will try to calculate heads, uh, head values for each grid cell in the model domain during the flow simulation. In many situations, the boundary conditions defining the edges of the model domain will not coincide with the exact rectangular shape of the model grid. In these situations, the grid cells outside of the model boundaries may be designated as inactive or no flow cells. These inactive grid cells are ignored by the model and are not used in any of the calculations for flow, particle tracking, particle tracking or contaminant transport. This can help to reduce the model run times. As an example here, we may want to set the area outside of this pink polygon as in being inactive. Inactive cells can be assigned on a single cell cell by cell basis as shown here. But inactive cells can also be assigned using polylines or polygons as shown here.
When you're satisfied with the grid and layer refinements for your model, you can proceed to the next workflow step, which is to define model properties. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more Visual Modflow Flex training videos. The next video in the series will explain the different ways that model properties can be assigned to grid cells. For additional training resources, including user manuals and free tutorials, please visit the Visual Modflow Flex support page on our website. A link is provided in the video description.